Have you ever wanted to look back on two or three years of progress inside of your business? Well, that's what I got to do recently when I watched this video that I shot with Jazz Takar three years ago at the Real Estate Investing Marathon. And Jazz was asking me all about our conversion projects that we're doing here in Toronto. Those projects have now completed and we are actually occupying those buildings. But it was really cool to take a look back and see that conversation that I had with Jazz. And I wanted to share it with you guys because it's always nice to be able to go back, take a look at what you've done, what you thought was going to happen on a project and what actually happened. But it's an opportunity for us to look back and kind of see where we've come from. We've cut it down for size to make sure we got all the great bits out of it. But I hope you enjoyed this video where Jazz is interviewing me about multifamily conversions here in the city of Toronto. My thought process when setting up this real estate marathon was, okay, I got a lot of friends and I know a lot of people who invest into real estate, but who am I gonna bring on? I decided right away, I'm gonna bring on the, the top, the 1%, the top, in that top, the 1% of the top. And that's my next guest. I'm bringing on Mr. Darren Voros. He himself has also been able to afford himself a life of what he wants to do now. He gets to choose. Why? Because he started investing in real estate. Mr. Darren Voros, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good, my friend. How are you, buddy? Look, I, I get told a lot I have a great smile, but I gotta tell you, my man, it's you. You take over it. Like, uh, I, I, I don't, I can't take that title gosh, anymore. You're, you're too bad. <laughs> I, first off, you've been killing it all day. Thank I've you. I've had you on since 9 a.m. this morning. Wow, thank uh, you, I've thank been watching you. All day and, and just, I know what kind of energy it takes to do what you're doing right now, so kudos to you, my friend. Well, uh, and, and you say that because uh, you've, you, you've been on TV for a very long time. You've been investing for a very long time. Another thing that I like, when I talk about, I talk about you a lot, Darren. Like, you know, you're one of those guys that I bring up, you know, and I drop your name all the time. When we did a podcast now going back to about a year, year and a half ago, you were, you were getting started into converting multi-res and you were starting like taking six plexes into nine plexes or taking a single family into a, 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 a triplex, duplex, whatever it is. What brought that about? I think it was just a simple, it's a simple numbers game, right? right? I mean, when you're looking at a single family dwelling that you're purchasing in Toronto, um, you know, I was, part of it was I was almost looking too small because it's like, we bought a property, the one that I talked about when I was on with you last time, yes. we bought it for $870,000. I called right. it the million dollar teardown. Yes. <laughs> and then we tore it down to the ground and built a, a triplex, a legal purpose built triplex with a laneway house in the back. Right. And I was like, that's good, but I'd rather have more units. So how do I get more units in one property? Because what I was really hoping to get to was okay. commercial financing. Love it. Six units or more. Now the property has to qualify for financing and not us personally as investors. Because right? that is an obstacle, hence the real estate marathon that you're going to run into, right? Like financing becomes an obstacle. That doesn't mean that it's going to stop people because as we just heard from uh, Corey and Tiffany, they got up to a hundred doors. We had people who have a thousand doors. You can do it. It's it's a matter of just shifting what type of strategy or what type of property you're looking at. And that's one of the biggest things I hear from investors is I have three properties. I can't get the four, five, and six because the bank won't finance me because they're looking at you personally because right. it's six units or less. Right. When you get to six units or more, now it's commercial financing. Now we're into boutique apartment buildings, is yeah. what I call them. Yeah. Buying a bigger single family dwelling or something that's maybe multiple units that's illegal, converting it to eight or nine legal units. Well, those kinds of properties require 5,000, 6,000 square foot homes on big lots. Well, we have those in Toronto, right? I, and I, we have them. And the problem is the purchase part price is $2.75 million. But they still cash flow. They, they cash flow even better than the smaller ones. Exactly. Because you're, you're, you're getting more units. You're getting eight or nine units. And your rental cost doesn't change that much right. on nine units as opposed to three units. Exactly. Because you, you can still rate. scale it out. Now, you're talking about purchase prices, two million, two and a half million. Let's work with $2 million. Uh, 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 another hurdle, an obstacle that gets in people's way is, well, I can't come up with the, the cap, the down payment, mm -hmm. for the, let alone... The, the, the renovation costs, which we can get construction finance, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, but just the down payment, what strategies do you use to get the down payment? Well, I think like your last thing was perfect, you know, segue to right. this, because we do it in joint venture, right? We do it as a, you know, most people don't have um, $2 million, you know, 20% uh, of that is right. about a $400,000 down yeah. payment, plus yeah. closing and land transfer. And Let's call it 500,000. Minimum. Minimum. 
That's not even rental. Exactly, not rental money. That's just closing on the property. Rental is another million and a half. Exactly. Right? To, to, so, to convert it. To convert it exactly. to nine units. Yes. Right? So who has that kind of capital? Not very many people. But guess what? Like you said earlier, if we need to find $2 million, if we need to raise $2 million for a project, we bring in 10 investors that have $200,000 a piece. Well, now that seems much more attainable. So I love that you said that, Darren. And we're going to come back into it because earlier on today, I was talking about the what and the why is the most important thing. What do you want? Why do you want it? Because when you run into those obstacles, you need to have a strong enough why. The how is not that is the how's not up to you. The how's around you, you'll figure it out. I'm not sure if everyone caught it who's watching and listening right now. But Darren said, look, I got to come up with the 500000 to to close it. He's going to do it through a joint venture. And he's going to figure out, okay, is it going to be five people that have $100,000 or is it going to be 10 people that have $50,000? There's hundreds of people watching here. So if you're trying to get a down payment for a property, you just got to figure out what it is and how many people you need and do the math around it. Well, I love, and Rav Tour was on here earlier. Yes. And Rav's the perfect example of a guy who like probably wants to get into a property that we're talking about right, right. now, but is like, has zero desire to actually be involved in it. Yes. Let's let us, the experts, let you manage the, the, the acquisition of it. Yes. Let me manage the renovation. This yes. is my expertise. Exactly. You, know what? you sit at home, make your 20% and relax with your investment. Darren, let's use a case study. Okay. I know you just finished a property. I won't mention the address, but it's a beautiful location in, in Toronto. Um, maybe we can mention the area where it is in Toronto. Yeah, we uh, we actually just purchased two uh, okay. over the last little while. One yeah. is in High Park, like prime High Park, okay. right between Keel Station and High Park Station. Out of province and out of country listeners, this is like triple A location. It's probably quadruple A location, if that means anything. Yeah, yeah. and the other one's, uh, you know, just uh, around the Dover Court and Blue area. So okay. another really great area. As again, going in and buying these big houses on these big lots. So we got one that was a, on a 50 by 200 lot. Okay. So if you know anything about conversion, what the city of, of Toronto bylaw states is that if you have R zoning, you can build an apartment building. But what you're going to be limited by is your lot size is going to right. depict how much gross floor area you can convert. So if you've got a 50 by 200 lot, right. you can convert 7,000 square feet into living space and as long as you meet the parameters, you can put eight units, you can put nine units in there, whatever. So what, these what the 7,000 mean? Like eight, 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 eight to nine units? Is that what it would kind of convert into? Yeah, like if we're talking about below uh, square footage, yes. like below grade square okay. footage and okay. above, yep. like, yeah, we would convert that to probably eight to nine units. Right? So can and we, we use Dover two? Court, for example, yeah. as an example? What, yeah. do we, what did we convert? Because I want to give our viewers like a live experience of how everything Sorry. worked, the numbers and so on and yeah, so forth. Yeah, so we purchased Dover Court for 2.1 million. Okay. Right? That one is actually a single family dwelling. Yep. We're going to we're gonna convert it to nine units. Two, uh, three in the basement, yep. and then two on each of the other floors. Got First it. floor, second floor, third floor. So okay. we're doing a third floor addition, we're doing yes. an extension, we're underpinning the basement, right? We're creating like a boutique apartment building, essentially, in these prime locations in Toronto. Nine rental units. In a year and a half, we're going to basically refinance, go to commercial financing, and then hold that thing as a long-term rental. Obviously, in that area, you'd want to hold on to it. Now, for somebody who's watching or listening, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not picking up a hammer. Like Jazz should not never touch a hammer. And I think a lot of the insiders know, but that's why Darren's part of this joint venture. And we partnered up with the experts because you have a massive background in renovations. I mean, for what you did in your own property, make sure to go check out Darren Voris's YouTube page because he speaks about this. The content that he's producing is like amazing. What is the YouTube name? The YouTube page name? Darren Voros, that's yeah. it. Very simple. And you keep it simple, silly. It's Darren Voros on YouTube. Make sure to go check out the content. He speaks a lot more about these conversions and so much, so much more. How and does you the, were, I guess, on the, I was on that. One I of did the first one. Well, now that you mentioned it, then you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, how are these joint ventures structured, generally speaking, Darren? So I think like when you're looking at it, for those people that are maybe not super familiar with joint venture partnering, it's mm -hmm. like, it's really easy. Working partner, and I call it money partner. Yes. That's, you know, the easiest way to explain yeah. it. The splits on how they work, it varies on every transaction, right? The way we usually start is somewhere in the 50-50 range. Right. The money partners come in, you know, put up the capital um, and then put up, you know, some of the renovation money sometimes. Maybe they're putting up some of the carrying costs, but as a group, they're doing that. On the other side, the working partners, that's you and I and yep. everybody that we're bringing to the table, that's our lawyers, our accountants. I'm coming in from construction, we're managing all that, we're doing all of those things, that's the working partner side. And that's kind of a standard split, that's where we start. 
each deal is so unique it's in so the way unique. we structure it and, and how we do it and, and what the timeline is and what everybody's looking for. So that, but that's a, that's a basic way that we look at it. In the game. And so like what Darren mentioned about putting the team together, I mean, that I think is what stops so many people, right? Mm -hmm. From an investor's perspective, it's like, what, the, what, what lawyer do I use? What accountant do I use? I mean, I tried to bring as many people as I possibly could today, but even if you thought that was too much work for this type of uh, a structure of a deal for this joint venture that we're talking about today, we're doing all that work in, and the physical uh, renovations, that's going to be Darren and the team. Who's part of that team, Darren? Um, so I work with uh, Aloha Kozial, who's a, a good friend of mine mm -hmm. and, and a partner of mine. She's on the management side, project management side. I have a construction manager who basically is part of my team. So I have somebody on site every day that, that is looking out for all of the things, is actually um, invested in a lot of the projects that we're right. on. So I love, I love it's an alignment of interest, which we love, right? Yes. They're incentivized. Um, absolutely. They're incentivized, and right? And Danny yeah. has been in the industry for, for like 30 years. He's a licensed plumber. He's like that. He's the guy on site. I'm checking in every day on quality control, making sure everything's done. I'm dealing with the architects, the engineers. All those people, right? It's, and, and it's, just, it's and, constant. It's and, constant. And sorry to cut you off there. Like even myself and CMOS as REC, like we have a lot of these people on, like not on staff, but we know a lot of these people in our Rolodex. But we still said, you know what? We're bringing in the expert. We're bringing in Darren because Darren knows what what needs to be done from a construction perspective. Like if I got a GC, a general contractor, I have no clue what the heck is behind that wall or what type of drywall they should be using. It's like, Darren, you're able to micromanage that. Well, it's not only that, but it's the process of getting the legalization of the nine. Yes. Let's talk about that. Because, you know, as a single family dwelling, converting to nine units, you know, that's not a, a simple process. It takes time. You yeah. gotta go to usually what's called the committee of adjustments. But you need people on your team that know that process and know how it works. You have to hire the right individuals to get you over that point because that's really where all of the upside is, is once you get that, okay, we've got nine units now, go and build it, right? Right. That's, I don't want to say it's easy. relatively easy, yeah, 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 yeah. but, you know, it takes time and energy. But that, that big first step is getting beyond that conversion, essentially, element to the nine legal units. If you're interested in learning how you can become a developer, check out my development course at darrenvoros.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.